Hi guys, I'm Tineet and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I want to show you how you can make a watercolor painting look better in just a few simple steps. All the materials that I've used is listed in the comments below. For every one color, I have three shades. For example, the gray of the column, I mixed three shades. This helps when you are trying to have a different shade to have in a color, but struggling to see the different undertones in the colors. When you paint, start with the lightest color and cover that area overall with that light color. Then use your darkest color in areas where you can identify as shadows. I used it in the return of the column and where the flowers casts a shadow on the wall. Then you can use the medium shade to give the wall some character. You can use the wet on wet technique or the dry on wet technique or use the wet on dry technique. When you paint something round, for example, the bicycle's pipe, you can use a similar approach as the one color three shades. So mix your three shades of pink. Paint the whole bicycle with the lightest shade. Then you can use your darkest shade to paint the areas where there is shadows. Have a look at your reference image and decide where and which side is the sun or light source coming from. On the opposite side, you can have a thin dark line on all the different pipes. To make it easier, you can see it as you've painted the whole element in the light pink. Then paint only a quarter of the element in the darkest shade. Then you can use your medium shade to blend out the harsh line between the dark and the light color. With the medium color, you can use up about a quarter or to a half of the area that is left. Because the area of the bicycle's pipes are so tiny, I used a wet on dry technique. Because it, is, it will still look blended out, due to the small lines and thin lines. When the element is bigger, you can definitely use a wet on wet technique to make it even smoother. Having a clear light source helps the artwork look that much more realistic and will help you to identify which area should be darker and which ones should be lighter. One of the easiest ways to have one main focus point in your artwork is to have more detail in the area you want to focus on. As you can see, the bicycle is my main focus, then the flowers and lastly the background, which includes the wall, column and floor. The background doesn't have any dark or definitive lines or detail. This helps your eye to move faster over that area. Another thing that helps the background to stay at the back is to use lighter and colder colors in the background. You can identify your cold colors by looking at the color wheel. Blue is the coldest color and on either sides of the blue, green and purple, is also seen as cold colors. Any color deriving from those colors and shades is called colors, including black and white with a blue undertone. These colors are always good to use in the background. If you want something in the foreground to pop out, you can use any color from red. Red is seen as a warm color, whereas yellow, orange and pink are also seen as warm colors. The closer the color to red, the warmer the color. For instance, a blue-gray color will be a cold color, where a cream or a brown-gray will be a warmer color. Therefore, warmer colors tend to look more in the front and grabs more attention. 
That's why I used a pink for the bicycle and flowers and a blue-gray for the background. Another thing that helps is to add in more colors in your different tones. For example, in the flowers, in some areas, I have a purple and an orange tone in the pink. It still looks pink but has a purple or orange tone. The rule of thirds is also very important. When you pick your image to draw, you don't need to use the whole image. You can crop it so that your main focus, in the case the bicycle, is in one of the thirds on your page. As you can see, the bicycle is on the bottom third of the page and the basket of the bicycle is in the left third of that third. Another thing you can do is to outline your drawing with a thin pen. In art, there is no right and wrong and you can mix mediums. With the bicycle, it has a lot of detail that is difficult to paint if you are not skilled and practice to paint with a thin brush and don't have a steady hand. You can add in detail and outlines with a black pen. The framework of the bicycle felt like it was disappearing a bit. In order to make it look more focused and for it to be the main focus in the painting, I out outlined it with a black pen. In areas where I needed a darker shadow, I also used the black pen. You can use a white milky pen also to add white highlights. You can also exaggerate areas of your artwork. For example, I added in a lot of additional flowers. Sometimes it helps to overdo one element to complete the artwork. To get it from a photo to the ex exact point you want it to be an artwork. This can work with clouds, grass, flowers or any other element that you can make your final product look better. Trust helps to improve the depth of your image. Have a look at your reference image and identify areas you can make lighter or darker. What helps is to put your image in Photoshop and to enhance the contrast. For instance, I made the flowers much darker than they are on my reference image, as well as areas of the column is much darker, where on the floor where the bicycle is standing on, I made lighter so that the bicycle is the main focus. Having contrast in your image gives it a good balance and makes it that much more interesting. You can paint a shadow line. For example, the flowers will cast a shadow on the wall. Using a shade darker than what the wall is, you can paint the silhouette of the flowers one side of them. Have a look at your image, your reference image, and decide where the sun, com sun comes from. On the opposite side will be the shadow. So there you can paint a very thin line next to it. Follow the pattern of the outline of the flowers and in the areas where the flowers are less or where there aren't any flowers on the branch, you can have a thinner line. At the bottom of the flowers, you can make an even thinner line of the shadow and let it smooth out into the flowers. Another thing you can do is to add detail. If you have a big area, like the wall in the background, where we have a brick pattern, but you don't want to add in all the detail so that it takes over, or make the main focus disappear, you can add a, in pieces of the detail in a very light shade, paint, then in with a thin line, have them re randomly spread over the area and incomplete, meaning you don't need to paint all four sides of each brick. Please leave any comments in the comment bar below. 
so that if you have any questions or struggling with anything specific, I can help you out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. See you next time.